Okay, so today we're going to be reading chapter 5 of Jim Woodford's testimony. He is having an experience when he had a near-death experience, probably about 10, 10 years ago. We're going to be covering chapter 5, which is very exciting and interesting. We covered chapter 4 previously. My advice to you before I begin this video is focus, concentrate on what I'm saying because there are some valuable insights that he gained when he was walking the streets of heaven surrounded by angels. Okay, so, so chapter 5 is entitled Walking with Angels and the introduction is this, it's a biblical reference, it's and the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. The nations will walk in its light, and the kings of the world will enter into the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of the day, because there is no night there. And all the nations will bring their glory and honor into this city. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter into the city, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's Revelation 21, uh, verse 23 to 27. That is just a small chapter introduction in the book, but the actual testimony begins now. So what is heaven like? So what is heaven like? Heaven is similar to the earth, but 10,000 times, 10,000 times more beautiful and serene. The most grandiose vistas and scenery on earth are only vague hints of the beauty that God has prepared for us in paradise. The most unexpected aspect of heaven's landscape was that color has sound and sound has color, creating a sensory spectrum that overwhelmed my being with a sense of wonder. So what he's saying is that colors themselves have sounds and sounds themselves have colors. So this is a new dimension that exists in heaven. Again, the commanding angel bowed to me in a gesture of invitation saying, would you walk with us? I nodded my head in acceptance. Then the angel turned gracefully and gestured with his arm in the direction that he wanted me to go. Now, with an angel on either side of me, the tall angel directly behind, they began to usher me into a landscape of unimaginable beauty. So he was surrounded, so he had one angel to the left, one angel to the right, and one angel behind him, and they're kind of walking in an almost diamond formation. I was forgetting the tunnel of light and the dark pit that was behind me, and was totally present to those who attended my journey. And this part is called IMAX vision. Heaven is not a globe or a sphere or a planet. So there is no disappearing horizon because there's no curvature to the space, I understand. Heaven is not a globe or a sphere, so there's no disappearing horizon in the landscape. Heaven is a continuous panorama expanding to infinity in every direction. Yet I could see features right in front of me with great clarity. It was as if the concept of distance was expelled from heaven and eternity. Heaven exists in a spiritual dimension beyond our earthly terrestrial experience. Things like colors, time, relative size, and distances are finite terms that are not really useful for describing the infinite nature of heaven. So he stepped into a different dimension and he started to realize that some of the rules of reality and the way things function are different and it's quite exciting he's talking about colors and 
uh, you know, kind of how distance operates and the fact that there's no curvature to the space because there is, it's not a sphere, it's just going on in infinitely forward, which is fascinating. As I was walking along the path with the angels, there was a great augmentation of my ability to see not only what was before me, but also in every direction at once. There was a full peripheral vision on all sides, behind and in front, without turning my head in any direction. It was more of a panoramic awareness. I am at a loss to explain the clarity of awareness in heaven. We see everything here in this life in mostly a surface level, two dimensional perspective. The vision in heaven allowed me to see at greater depth. There was a 360 degrees of vision that I can only compare to being in an IMAX theater with no limitation in depth or distance. It was as though I could see a single bloom of a flower on the side of a distant mountain, yet also see those sights directly in front of me at the same time. My eyes became as a microscope and a telephoto lens simultaneously. So what he's describing is that his vision and his visual ability whilst in his spiritual body was beyond anything that he had experienced before. Not only was he able to see at great distances, we would say millions of miles very easily, he was also able to see simultaneously what was behind him and in front of him. And he could also look at something in the distance and in front of him at the same time. And there was no limitation to what he could see in the distance, which again is just an incredible uh, kind of testimony about the power of the spiritual body and the spiritual eyes, which is fascinating. This bit is called the, the, the landscape of heaven. So heaven's landscape was punctuated with recognizable features like the appearance of mountains, trees, flora of all kinds, flowers, streams and brooks filled with brilliant blue and crystal water. All of the features of the surrounding landscape were filled with a bedazzling array of colors and sounds beyond any artist's palette or composer's manuscript. All are laid out in a multi-sensory banquet under a brilliant blue sun yet sunless sky. So he said the sky was blue according to his uh, understanding. In my estimation, the blue was a deeper blue than I was used to seeing in the sky. Not a darker blue, rather a deeper blue. As we walked along, this simple woodland path surrounded with lush green grass appeared before me. Simple may not be the best description, as in fact it was a path of breathtaking colour. There were blooms of flowers of dizzying variety bordering the path on both sides. So he's walking kind of through a woodland path with flowers on each side. Trees bedecked with iridescent leaves hung over the surrounding landscape we were walking through. I was on sensory overload and had to pause to take in the scenery with the angels on either side of me. They stopped to allow me to absorb what I was seeing. As I looked down at the flowers along the path, I was confused at first. He's looking at flowers now. It looked to me as if the flowers were all one mass of color, but I discovered as I bent down closer that the petals of every flower were translucent, like stained glass. The flowers were pearlescent. Each, flower, each flower's color merged with the colors of the next flower, one beneath the other, so in kind of layers. There would be a red flower, and beneath the red flower would be a yellow flower, and then a blue flower below that, and, a green and then green with the stem. The appearance of the flowers reminded me of multifaceted stained glass of every color melded together, providing shades of known and yet indescribable varieties of color, and colors merging with the others. I stopped to study them a little more closely. One of the angels saw that I was obviously transfixed and overwhelmed by the wonder of the flowers and smiled in delight. As we moved along slowly, the angel pointed out various aspects of this indescribable flora. The flowers not only had color, they had sound as well. 
accompanying the visual beauty was a concert of impromptu music created by the petals of the flowers as they were moved by a constant gentle breeze that filled the landscape. There was a sense that the flowers sang an original and infinitely flowing melody without cadence or conclusion. I said to the guardian, is this music from the flowers? And he said, yes, James, the flowers and all of heaven are so happy that you're here. They are filled with joy and they're singing just for you. To me, the tall warrior angel described joy as a living, sorry, the tall warrior angel described the emotion of joy as a living on the edge of a huge laugh, motivated by a constant awareness of the presence of God. I cannot help but smile thinking about that definition of joy. I experience that feeling even today as I recall my experience in heaven. There were also brooks and small streams of water that were about three to four feet wide. They were not deep, but the water was a brilliant blue. The pebbles that lay on the bed of the streams were golden in color. The water was lit from the bed of the stream with light ascending upwards as rivets of light danced on the surface of the stream. The water made sound as well. The sh these streams also composed a spontaneous, twinkling, musical offering that accompanied our steps through the landscape. The angel described these streams as living waters of life. I was told that these brooks fed into a larger central river that flowed beneath the sixth gate of joy into the city of heaven. Every stream was connected to every other stream, just as we are to one another. The flowers, the breeze, and even the streams all sang together, creating a symphonic concert that resounded throughout heaven's landscape, flowing and cascading to the, flow, to, to the throne of God. I repeat, the flowers, the breeze, and even the streams and rivers sang they were singing songs. <laughs> uh, that is very strange when you think about that. As I continue to examine As I continue to examine the flowers, I bent towards them, and the most wonderful fragrance came up from the flowers, like everything else. I experienced in the garden of heaven. I strained to compare it to what we have on earth. The, f the fragrance could be compared to a memory of being surrounded by sweet smelling jasmine flowers I experienced in the South Pacific, or perhaps the smell of incense burned during the Catholic mass I, rem I recall as a small boy. It was sweet and powerful in effect, yet not overpowering. It was the pervasive fragrance of love that permeated everything around me in heaven. It was a scent that filled my senses and flowed along with the breeze. I turned to the angel on my left and I said, they smell so beautiful. The angel said, yes, James, that is the smell of sanctity. Everything in heaven reflects the love and nature of God, from colors upon colors, to the fragrance of flowers, to the constant serenade of music, to the startling purity of the streams of water flowing through heaven. The city itself is illuminated by the very presence of God. No sun, nor moon, nor stars, only the light of God and the Lamb. All things, every sensory input inspired by and bearing the signature of God. Eternal light of heaven. As a pilot for many years, I was first trained to orient my geographical position by, by the use of greater and lesser lights in heaven. To my great surprise, 
There was no source of natural light in heaven. There was no sun, no moon, no stars, or other celestial sources. Everything, and I mean everything, was infused and bursting with the light of God Almighty. Light comes out of everything, from the grass and the flowers to the angels. Absolutely everything is filled with light and there is no darkness at all in heaven or shadows. Because the light came out of everything, there were no shadows. But imagine for a moment looking at scenery and there are no shadows of any kind. Everything in heaven was revealed in a dazzling optical clarity. There is also no shadow of doubt or disbelief, no shadow of shame, no shadow of death. This is all pervading light. This all pervading light is like the light of truth that banishes any shadow of falsity. There is no need for shade or shelter from a blazing sun because there is no sun in heaven. There is no need to hide from the foul weather in heaven. There is no weather. There is no bad weather. The light felt like the warm and gentle love of God. I can imagine that heaven is rather like the Garden of Eden. Physically, the temperature was like a constant 72 degrees Fahrenheit. As I've shared this experience here and there, I've been asked, well, weren't you allowed a period of rest in heaven? That would assume somehow I was weary or tired. The simple answer is that it wasn't necessary like it is here on earth, with all of our cares and worries and the physical limitations. I was unaware of any pain or distress or fatigue of any kind. In fact, the only emotion carried to the precincts of heaven is love. Love. To my awareness, my body was more a blend of spirit and flesh, and there, and there was sorry, yeah, and there was no weariness or physical fatigue. Yet I could move as I did in my earthly body. Although I was not sorry, although I was not weary, there were along the pathway, meaning, meaning the path that he was going little alcoves or areas where one might pause for a meditative reflection. Nests of quiet focus as a person might do at twilight or at the end of a full day. These spaces were softly snuggled in the green and varied flora and filled with music of heaven's joyful greeting. Yet there is no end of day and a ton yet sorry, Yet there is no end of day and eternal light in heaven. There is the rest, sorry, there is rest in the embrace of heaven's loving light. Enthralled, I gathered in the sights and sounds of heaven's landscape that spread out before and around me in every direction. As we walked along, we came to a large meadow in the midst of heaven's garden. It was bordered by a familiar sight that had been with me on earth for most of my life, a sight that was a delight to me and that made me feel as though heaven and this precinct of paradise was created just for me. And this sight that I was familiar with were horses. There were horses in heaven. So that is chapter four of Jim Woodford's book, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to read another chapter next, and that chapter is going to be when he met a very special person in heaven. That uh, I hope that you would, uh, you know, he, he, he met a very special person in heaven, and I'm going to leave it at that. So thank you so much, and if you enjoyed that, please feel free to leave a comment, uh, like the video if you like to, and subscribe if you if you enjoyed my content. Thank you.